Mankind's future on this planet depends on the honeybee. So why are we exterminating them? Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. There are nearly 20,000 known species of bees, which can all be divided into seven to nine different families. They can be found on every continent, except for Antarctica, and in any habitat that contains insect-pollinated flowering plants. Though bees were not the first insects to pollinate flowers, they did evolve to become the most efficient. And in this task, they reigned supreme. Bees evolved from wasps, which were predators of other insects. Scientists believe that the switch from prey to pollen may have occurred when the larvae of their ancient ancestors would consume flower-dwelling insects that were covered with pollen. As bees evolved into the incredibly efficient pollinators that they are today, so did the flowers that they pollinated. As incentive, flowers developed delicious nectars and longer tubes, and bees developed longer tongues to extract the nectar. They also evolved scopal hairs and pollen baskets on their hind legs to help collect and carry pollen, like tiny flying balls of Velcro. To communicate the exact location of a food source to other worker bees, they perform a waggle dance. At first, the bee walks a straight line while shaking its abdomen back and forth. The speed and distance of the shaking, along with the direction the bee is facing, tell the other bees where to find the food. The dance pattern looks like a figure eight, and the honeybee will continuously circle back to the center and repeat the straight part of the movement. Although it's widely believed that honeybees can only sting once before dying, this is actually only partially true. The honeybee stinger will only dislodge from its abdomen if the victim's skin is thick enough for the barbs to stick. While the skin of most mammals will do the trick, they can stick other insects without causing harm to themselves. Honeybees are the only bees that will die after stinging a human. Losing parts of its abdomen and digestive tract plus muscles and nerves along with its stinger. Though we tend to think of bees as communal insects, in reality, nearly 90% of bees lead solitary lives. Most solitary bees nest in the ground and typically don't produce honey or beeswax. They're often stingless and generally harmless. A communal colony typically consists of three different kinds of adult bees, the workers, the drones, and the queen. Each member has an important role to perform and cannot survive without the support of the colony. A colony's queen is chosen at random. From birth, she is exclusively fed a diet of royal jelly, which speeds her development. She then kills her competition and assumes her position on the throne. The queen's primary function is to reproduce, and at her peak, she may lay up to 1,500 eggs per day. A single queen bee can lay up to 250,000 eggs per year, and may lay up to a million in her lifetime. Her secondary function is to produce pheromones, which provide a unifying social glue among the colony and shape the physiology and behavior of other bees. Honeybees have one of the most complex pheromonal communication systems in the natural world. Releaser pheromones elicit an immediate and temporary behavioral response from the receiving bee. For example, an alarm pheromone. Primer pheromones, on the other hand, have a long-lasting physiological effect, such as slowing the development of certain types of bees to maintain equilibrium within the nest. The majority of bees occupying a colony are workers. They are sexually undeveloped females and usually will never lay eggs. Among other things, they are primarily tasked with cleaning the hive, caring for the queen, feeding the brood, handling incoming nectar, constructing beeswax combs, and guarding the hive entrance. When the queen dies, several worker bees will develop sexual organs and lay unfertilized drone eggs until a new queen takes the throne. Drones are the male bees in the hive, and their primary function is to fertilize the queen. They have no stinger, pollen baskets, or wax glands, and perform no useful function for the hive beyond reproduction. Now that we've covered physiology and colony structuring, let's dive into humanity's relationship with bees. Without bees, we would have no coffee, apples, peaches, watermelons, tangerines, blueberries, cashews, apricots, walnuts, eggplants, grapes, almonds, kiwis, mangoes, cranberries, okras, pears, peppers, cantaloupes, strawberries, avocados, or cucumbers. <sighs> In fact, Bees pollinate one-third of the world's crops. We rely so heavily on bees that it's believed that if the world's bee population went extinct, 
we would soon follow. What's disconcerting is that over the past 10 years, bee populations have been dwindling at a catastrophic rate, thanks to a phenomenon called colony collapse disorder. There's an ongoing debate surrounding the ongoing disappearance of bees, but rather than a single culprit, it appears that a variety of influences have led to the mass death of bees. First and foremost, the collapse of bee colonies worldwide corresponds to the widespread use of neonicotinoids as pesticides. Bees who come into contact with these pesticides begin to exhibit symptoms similar to Alzheimer's, spontaneously abandoning their hives only to lose their way never to return. But that's not all. In addition to pesticides, it's believed that bees are also dying from various parasites, viruses, and fungi. Mites infest the honeybee broods, weakening the bees and causing birth defects. And to cap it all off, <sighs> global warming. Climate change is affecting pollination by disrupting the synchronized timing of flower blooming and the timing at which bees pollinate. As temperatures rise, flowers bloom earlier in the growing season, before bees have had a chance to pollinate. When bees finally begin pollination, there's limited nectar available and competition for these valuable resources becomes more intense. This is a very serious problem that might soon become our reality. Despite what some powerful people out there might have you believe, global warming is not a hoax invented by China. We need to take responsibility for our actions before it's too late. Let's not let the bees go. Okay guys, not the bees. Not the bees! So what animal should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments. If you want to support the show and get episodes a week early, you can do so by signing up for a free trial of the video streaming app Love Nature, which is now available in Canada. Be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week on YouTube. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.